Hey everybody, this is Jim Hester. I'm a software engineer at RStudio. Naming variables and functions is something that every R user wrestles with. And as a result, there's a number of conventions that have arisen in the R, R stats community. Among them, dot case, camel case, and snake case. You might think that which of these you use is largely personal preference, and that's true for the most part. However, one of these, dot case, has serious technical drawbacks due to the way S3 dispatch works in the R language. As a result, our stats tip number one is avoid dots in your names. Now let's go a little further into, de into why this is the case. So first, let's review um, each of these cases. So snake case is denoted by lowercase uh, word, words separated by underscores. This is the case used in the tidyverse packages and the case that I would recommend uh, if you have no, no prior uh, preference. Another common case is camel case, which uses uppercase letters to denote each the breaks between words. In this case, it would be read CSV. The third common case uh, is dot case, which uses dot to separate the words. So first, uh, why don't I, I really love camel case? So the, the main reason is when you're, you're dealing with very large uh, function names, such as abstract singleton proxy factory bean, which believe it or not, is a real uh, function in, the, in a Java library. Um, the, the camel case gets a little, little hard to read. It's definitely readable, but I think the equivalent snake case would be a little bit more readable than, than the camel case version. In particular, if the function it has acronyms, I find the camel case version much more difficult, such as an HTTP post request. Um, the equivalent camel case, you could keep the acronym as uppercase letters and then separate them um, by underscores, and it'll be a much more readable word. You don't have to guess where the acronyms, acronym starts and, and the other word begins. So, but this is really a personal preference and there's no technical reason that camel case is better or worse than snake case. However, that is not the case for dot case. So, if, but first, the, a reason to avoid dot case is users coming from other languages are going to be confused by it. So in C++, Java, and Python, read.csv is not just a simple call, function call like it is in R. It's instead a call to the CSV function in the read object. And as a result, um, if a, a user who's more familiar with these other languages uh, is using R, they're going to be confused by your code. The other reason that dot .case is, should be avoided is is actually a technical one. So S3 dispatch in R is based on a generic function name, which can have any separator in it, it um, and then followed by a dot and then the class name to denote the method. And, and this uh, convention results in ambiguities when you're using dots in your, in your function and object names. So let's take the as.data frame function. I'm defining it here just to print high, but this is actually a normal function in base R. So if I define this function to print high and then call it with a with any object, it will print high as, as called as a normal function. But you can also make this into an S3 method by defining an a, a generic a new generic. So if I use if I define a generic as dot data, this our, our function, which used to be just a normal function, is now a a method for this as dot data generic. So if I define this generic and then create a new object with a class of frame, then the function that's going to be called when I call as dot data on this object is our as.data.frame function. 
as you can see. And we can extend this further. So if we have a method as, a generic method as, now if we call as on empty cars, we get our, it calls our same function because empty cars has a class of data dot frame. So there's actually two different things going on here. First, the function is using dots as separators and the object is using dots within its, its object name. And both of these combine to make this truly a, a very ambiguous um, code. In contrast, using underscores for this as.data generic removes all the ambiguity. So as.data, as underscore data dot frame is clearly an S3 method for the as data generic. And as data frame, as data frame with all underscores is clearly just a normal function call. You might think that this is really an academic um, difference and this won't happen in practice, but Colin Fay had a really great example recently on Twitter. So he tweeted that in the last version of dplyr, you can call select on a list and R interactively asks you which elements you want to select. And Colin initially thought that this was a new feature in dplyr that we had added. Well, let's see what's actually going on. If we load dplyr and then call dplyr select on a, a list, we get this interactive dialog that's showing which of these, which of our columns we want to select. And this seems really nice, but actually what's going on is that there's a function select.list in base R, and we're just calling that with our list object. So while um, the God smiled upon us, and this worked in this case. Almost, in almost every other case, this would be a serious bug and um, it would be a major problem. And, and it comes only from the fact that select.list is a normal function, but is named as if it's an S3 method. So because of this, I really strongly, strongly suggest you avoid having dots in your names. It's confusing to users coming from other languages. It's ambiguous as a result of this S3 dispatch, and it can result in real runtime errors, as we saw in Colin's example. If you have um, suggestion, if you want suggestions on, on the styles to use or the styles we use in the tidyverse, go to style.tidyverse.org for our full style guide. And if you're interested, in more details on S3 Dispatch, see the S3 chapter of Advanced R by Hadley Wickham. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.